Do we have any public input at this time? Who's running IT today? I am and we have nobody here. Awesome, okay. So then I move to approve the minutes from the last meeting on September 28th. Couple, couple things. Mm -hmm. uh, paragraph one or under item seven, it says Bradford pear tree. Do we want to just put in parens there that it was a little leaf mended just because this is a record? I would just delete Bradford pear and say a tree. Okay, just, you know, I'd rather have, I, I don't like the incorrect variety there, that's all. Yeah. Yes, no, but, yes, no, maybe. I agree. I agree. Just if, if anyone's not sure what um, Peter's referring to, he actually went by um, the area where the large tree was removed and we're replacing um, with the East Avenue project, 22 trees. And uh, Peter um, identified it as a different species of tree than was indicated um, uh, last week. So we just want the record to be corrected. Oh, or clarified. And then just on page four, still under item seven, uh, Mr. Sotnik said, second paragraph to the end, the Sephora is spelled incorrectly. Uh, yes. So it's capital S-O-P-H-O-R-A. And you go ahead and add the uh, other uh, genus name, Japonica, little J-A-P-O-N-I-C-A. -A. After all, we had a tree committee. <laughs> pretty that's good. All, that's all I had. Those are the same two I had. Pretty good. Got it. Also, under um, where it talked about the number of trees going in at 15 Madison Street, it listed three on Madison Street and two on Monroe, and it's actually four on Madison Street in addition to the Arborvitaes. Cool. Yeah, correct. That that count got totally changed. Right. Are we taking out Monroe then? Uh, oh, well, did we know that at the time of the meeting when we were saying that? Yes. Well, I don't know if we knew the total count because I think uh, me, you, and Sonia staked the site after okay. the meeting. But we knew we were doing both. Monroe and, and Madison of the complex. I think the only thing we didn't know the count on were the um, the giant emeralds. We didn't know the count on those. Correct. Okay, okay so to, to clarify then discussing planting, there will be, should be four trees on Monroe, correct? Four trees on Madison. Madison. Four trees on Madison. And two on Monroe and then the giant emeralds. And then 13, you know, okay. All right. And that's for a total of 19. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So with those corrections, do we move to approve the meeting minutes from September 28th? Motion to approve as modified. I'll second that. Great. Um, when Paul sent out the agenda, he also attached a schedule of meetings for 2022. I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at them, but they reflect the same um, week on a Tuesday for the entire calendar year. Um, the only meeting I questioned was the one that we have listed on the 27th of December, as it might be a little difficult for people to meet um, in between Christmas and, um, and Hanukkah and other holidays and New Year's. So um, we usually um, end up kind of canceling that meeting. And so, so Paul modified the schedule um, from when you first saw it, where it's taking that December 27th meeting out. Did anyone else have any comments about any of the dates reflected here for the calendar year 2022? 
Nope. Okay, great. So then um, we move to accept it, Paul, the way it is. Okay. With that December modification. Thank you for doing that. Okay, and then uh, I'll distribute that to the mayor's office because they usually want it in the beginning of November, so we'll be all set with that. Perfect. Um, Paul, the capital tree planting program is next, so if you want to share your screen and yeah. um, show everyone that chart that we have. You guys see it? Yes. Okay. We have Aiken Street. There's 26 trees that have been planted up on Aiken Street. In the area of the soccer complex. I put down the Madison as ordered because I know today we had been talking back and forth with what we were going to do. So Gary is actually going to start putting the green uh, giant arborvitaes in. And I know Sonia, he was making contact with you to get the passcode and everything. So you guys should be all set with that, I think. Um, I haven't checked my email, but I haven't didn't have anything from him uh, earlier when I checked, but I'll check again. Okay. Yeah, I think he sent you something a little later this afternoon. Okay. And then we've now originally had the two uh, Tulupos ordered. Uh, and Gary could not find those, so we've now switched those out, and we're going to go with another species of trees there. Rich, you are going to give us those two species now? Yeah, I've switched it from Tupelo black gum to the Princeton elms because the black gum weren't available. All right, I, what do those leaves change to? Because I had a conversation with Paul this afternoon, and we talked about um, sugar maple and red maple. This oh, is at, over uh, here. Sugar Maple. This is at the high school. Yeah, but I think we had a couple of those at Sonia's also, didn't we? Can yeah, we Yes. I will let you know. We had originally there were the two red mid American lindens, the two black tuplos, and the two scarlet oaks. The two plows and the scarlet oaks were the issue. Right. So I mean, would, would sweet gum work, Rich? The, the brighter colored. Uh, um, they would, but I don't know. No, no, no. I looked at those sweet gums and they have this thing that they, this little ball that they drop. That would be a problem for us. Most people don't like that. But. Yeah, that would be a problem for us. Um, so based on the conversation that I had with Paul this afternoon, I reached out to the board and uh, everyone agreed to go with the red maple and the um, sugar maple on okay. the Madison Street side. Is the soil wet at all, Rich? That's the only issue. No, not wet over there. Because okay, the red maple will take it, of course. No, pretty, pretty good. All right. And which, okay, which ones do you prefer on the Monroe Street side? Um, I thought we were going to still go with the uh, American Lindens over there. Good. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Good. Oh, okay. All right. So that would be two Lindens on the Monroe side. Monroe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Two Lindens there, and then the other four trees, and then the 13 Arborvitaes. Right. And I know initially we were going to try to put, um, put the two Scarlet Oaks together and the two Tupelos, but we can actually mix these since they're in the same family. So that we can, you know, because one of them goes red in the fall, one is yellow. So if we can do red, yellow, red, yellow, that'd be great. Or yellow, red, however they do it, but so that they're mixed. Okay, we'll just have to switch the steak around. Change the I label, it's easier. Buying. Change the label, it's easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was about to say, when they, when they come out, I'll, I'll be here, so I'll be able to show them. Yep, okay, we'll take care of that. 
So I think All on right. this part, if we could um, add another column that has the genus and species, this way we're all on the same page with exactly what. Yeah, I can, I can to distribute that, to put, but to put that in an agenda, the agenda is going to end up, it's going to be more difficult. Because some of these, they have four and five different trees on them in one location. But I have the sheets, I can distribute spreadsheets to everyone if you want to see it. Okay, you can, you know what, Paul, if you want to email it to me, I'll, um, I'll rework the, the chart. Uh, and 466 Flax Hill Road, those four trees were maples and sugar maples, they're already planted. Driftwood Lane was a quonset and cherry that's already planted. There were 13 trees on Merrill Road that were a mix of Yoshino cherries, red maples, and sugar maples. Those are all planted. Eight, we got a request for two on Raymond Terrace, flowering dogwoods. Those are all planted. 133 Murray Street. I believe they were going to plant that tomorrow, but it's ordered but not in the ground yet. The two of those, two sugar maples. We met again with the people down at Cannon Street for the replacement trees that we were required to put in over there. And I was able to convince uh, the property owner that there shouldn't be four trees in that area. Really, there should be two shrubs and the husband didn't like the idea of the trees either. And he agreed that said there should be Two cherry laurels, so they're going to go with cherry laurel shrubs, one eastern pine and one Norway spruce for those four trees. There's a maple for over at uh, Kasuth Street. It's a replacement. And then you've got the 21 First Street replacement for the Ragusa Rose. That's the one that was taken up. It's already planted. Did you wire it down this time, put a little concrete under it? <laughs> we, we nailed it into the ground. <laughs> All right. It's electrified also, Peter. Good. Way. Probably got a solar panel on it. <laughs> so that gives us, that gives us right now uh, a total of 75 trees that either have been ordered or are about to be planted within the next few days or already in the ground. So 75 for this one planting only that's reflective of this fall 2021 only that's correct okay hey paul how and we're still in the process i've got two other ones that i've been asked for over on reynolds street down by uh the highway garage chris and then i've got uh the ones up on east avenue we're still working with with peter and mr craighead We've uh, recruited two new tree, tree liaisons too, Brad and Tracy Craighead from the Wall Street area and the Norwalk Green area. They were interested in this, so they started going around and talking with the people, and that's the trees, and I'll be talking about those in just a minute under item number six. And, and, and that's Craig, fantastic. And Craig also sort of represents what is the Norwalk Green Neighborhood Association. Um, yes. You know, so he's plugged into the community group and he's property owner as well. So. And he owns three properties in that area and agreed to uh, take part in looking for locations for trees in that upper section of East Avenue, uh, all the way up to Westport Avenue. Paul, if you could please share the contact information for the two new tree liaisons so that we can get them on the master list and get them a copy of the past emails, training information, and copy of the Charter Oak so that they can all be brought up to speed with the rest of the group? Yes. Yep, Thank I'll you. send that to you. Thank you. Any questions on these at all? Um, I just wanted to make a comment about the 23 Calvin Murphy Drive. That is the uh, Norwalk High School. And um, uh, Paul, Rich, and I were on an email earlier with Olmstead, and we're looking at this Friday, the 29th, as a planting uh, date for that site. 
It's not confirmed, but I reached out to the high school to find out if they could get a program together uh, in such short notice. They were very adamant um, and rightfully so about uh, creating it um, uh, as a student-centered um, uh, a student-centered program where we could use it as an educational opportunity and um, and kind of have the students there backfilling the the soil and um, and learning about trees in Norwalk at the same time. So as soon as I find out if Friday works for the high school, I'll send everyone an email just so that we know. And if anybody can make it that day, that would be that would be great to show support. Um, otherwise, at least you know we'll we'll, we'll know about it. And then also to Erica, if Friday doesn't work for them, I can always get Olmstead to push it out a day or two next week if they have to. So if it doesn't work, just let us know and I'll talk to Gary. Perfect, thank you. So this is 75 that will be planted. Uh, it's basically a record just to give everybody an idea and Sonia too from our past history, basically our record in two or three years ago for one cycle, whether it be fall or spring, was about 35, 36 trees. Last fall, we had a record of 56 requests that we filled. And now this year, it will be a minimum of 75 and possibly even more. So it, the trend is going up and we're, it's another record setting planting season. Very nice. That's very nice. It's over 20% increase. So congratulations. Mm, great. Paul, um, did you want to mention the budget? What do we have remaining yeah. to look at for the spring? Okay, that's uh, I'm gonna bring that up basically, and it gives us the area where we are in terms of capital budgets and where we've got to go to. Uh, you can see that to start with, I'm gonna start in the middle of the screen, the two greens, basically. We had some money that was left over from fiscal year 2021. And then we got our $65,000 allotment in July, putting us a total of $76,000 for everything we put together. And based on the trees that we had originally ordered, and I also modified the two at uh, the high school, order 152, all of that totaled. And assuming that we may do possibly 11 for East Avenue, not sure yet or not, that would take us down to having spent 68,599, leaving us about $7,800 round numbers. And as I mentioned last month, some of the Aiken Street area, 81 Rest Rocks, is going to be compensated and we'll be getting some of that money back. Uh, we'll be getting approximately $13,000. So round numbers, we're going to have about $20,000, $21,000 left for the spring of 22, which would give us about 25 trees. Hey, hey, Paul. Yep. Uh, I think Deline has money in the tree account that is newly created by the ordinance. Um, I think there's like $4,000 or close to it from, from the nine Bel Air. All of that money yep. we put into that tree account. Okay. Those would have been the five right. numbers. And that would give us about 25, which would give us close to 30 trees then for the spring. So that money came from the fines on Bel Air? Yes, sir. Okay, just, just for the record. <laughs> That's good. We'll going to plant some new trees with it. And then, so if we do the 11, that would bring us to 86. And then if we were, were just as an idea to what TMP had done with the 18A done and the 1129, overall the city this fall would be around 115 trees if we end up doing those two groups of 11 for the 22 trees. So, Paul, no. just focusing on, on TAC, um, what do we have left and what are we looking at in terms of trees that we can plant in the spring? Because we're getting a lot of requests and um, liaisons are, are filling out those forms, which is what we want them to do. But I'm becoming concerned that we're going to have to start saying no for the first time. We have the 7790 here plus another at least $13,000. So we're talking $20,000 20, $20, there, $21,000. And then now the four that Chris just mentioned, twenty five. dollars So that would give us about 30 trees. Okay, and where is the 13 coming from, Paul? That's not reflected on here? 
Okay, up and what we spent on the 22,000, that was for the road along Aitken Street where the soccer complex went in. And it looks as though there's gonna be some money left in that account, which can be used for planting. So we've been told with Parks and Rec and Vanessa that they would put more money toward that to offset some of the trees that we planted along the road that were kind of a result of that complex. They had planted 15 as part of the original plans. And then Rich had worked with Ken to come up with the other 20. And then the six down in the back there we did, so 26. It's to offset some of that cost. So you'd have the 14 plus the seven, almost $8,000 at 2122, plus the four, you'd be $25,000, $26,000. Okay. <laughs> Maybe somebody else understood that. They can explain it to me later. <laughs> Real easy. In, in, in a sentence, basically a project. <laughs> Uh, I'll, make it real easy. I'll make it real easy for you to understand. In a project that was out there that we had to do some tree planting for, they've agreed to give us some money. Okay. There are a couple of numbers you're not saying there. It's okay. Yeah, okay. They don't have them in there yet. The, the point is point is they're positive, they're not negative. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, and so what we're looking at about 30 to 33 trees potential for next, next uh, season. Yes. Yeah, okay. we, do, we do have more requests, Erica, from the liaisons. Those should roll over so that we know we start the fall 2022 list with the any overflow. Agreed. Agreed. We can start our waiting list. I just, you know, who, who wants to say no to planting a tree, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And that was kind of why I brought it up because the capital budget cycle is starting now. So we're gonna to have to get together and talk as a group to decide what we're gonna request for 2022, 2023 capital budget in terms of tree planting. Absolutely. Uh, Paul, do you wanna roll right into the uh, watering and maintenance schedule? Okay. Uh, is there any kind of promotional work that we wanna do based on uh, what we've planted now? What would that what would that be? Um, yeah, um, what do you what are you referring to? In other words, are you a press release or something? Is that what you're trying yeah, to do? Yeah, I was gonna see uh, I'll see okay. again if I can get Josh to do some kind of a press release for the fall plantings and see what kind of positive press and information we can get out there on what we've accomplished for the fall. I think maybe if um if you spoke to Josh and framed it. Um, as that we, this fall 2021, have planted the most tweet trees we've ever planted in X number of years or something like that. That might be kind of exciting, but it has to yeah. be framed that way. Okay. I'll talk with him then. All right, I will do that. All right. The water schedule Homestead has provided me the list of water locations that they've been working on and doing. Uh, Obviously, there's been quite a bit of rain lately. <laughs> they haven't had to do too so much. And then they've already started to put the new locations in. And I'm just scrolling through because it's several pages. What we did in the spring, you can see here, they've already put locations and the dates that they were out doing the watering. And they've already started to enter the new locations that we've made orders for this fall and differentiated between the two for TMPs as well as the new locations that we've just started to put in and talk about now. And as I mentioned, this watering chart was a requirement for the new contract. So they have to do this every month now. Well, that's great. So at least, you know, we have a schedule. We know that there um, is some accountability and, um, and we can, you know, reference this. If anybody ever um, says that a tree wasn't watered, we can see if it was um, neglected from this list or if it was in fact taken care of. So I'm glad they're providing that to you, Paul. Um, you know, part of the money that we pay 
um, is for this service for an additional two years. So it's pretty important that we have a record of it. It actually um, they, yeah. making a difference. They've even detailed the gator bags, where they put gator bags, fertilizer, things like that. Right, Peter, did you want last to say list, something? Uh, I'm looking at the list for that last batch planted on 1013, I guess. So the right-hand column, it says, what are those, have those, those been watered or were they watered when they were planted? No, no, because they just put them in a week or so ago. I would imagine they did it when they put them in at the time, but this is like the re going back after the initial installation. Should, should we, is that date on the left-hand column consistent for the installed date all the way through the list? Yes. They take that, if I look at order 153, which I have right in front of me here, if I take a look at order 153, the date to the contractor was 10-12-21 and they installed it on 10-13. What took them so long? <laughs> <laughs> They're busy. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what the success rate is with the watering program. And I don't know if we get an answer for that. Just, just you know, is the, is the watering in the contract making a difference with less replacements overall? Mm -hmm. It's not worth going back, I don't think at this point, but just keep in the back of our minds. It's I haven't really seen too many replacements over the last year. Does anybody else know of any? No, it seems like it's working because we had a lot I, at least I don't have like hard numbers, but it seems like there were a lot more replacements previous than we have since the contract got modified. So when we go into our educational mode, I mean, the recognition that water is critical is just, here's evidence of it. So it's just- Yeah, yeah it's a direct correlation to success, sure. Right, and that's what, and that's what we're paying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think the biggest replacements that I've had over the last couple of years has been like the one on Washington Street where a truck mowed it down or the one over on uh, First Street where somebody stole it. <laughs> so. Okay, great. Thank you, Paul. So um, the next item on the agenda is um, Tree City USA. And um, just as an aside, Norwalk Community College is also gonna be applying for Tree Campus USA uh, for NCC. It'll be the third year in a row that we're making the application. Um, and there are some similar things um, such as an Arbor Day celebration. And so Paul, maybe you can let us know where we are uh, with those items. Okay, what I'm looking to do basically is see if anybody's got any information or anything they'd like to supply to me that could be used for our Tree City recertification. If you've got a lot of hours on a project, the volunteer hours, those kinds of things that we could use. So I'm starting to put the application together and basically just wanted to let everybody know we're getting ready to do it. And uh, Delene will be pulling the finances for me for the year and we'll be starting to fill out the electronic application. Are you going to, Paul, are you going to include the uh, liaison training that we conducted? Because we haven't done that in a few years. I can put that in as a, possibly a growth award or educational item. Yeah. I can also take, and we've got some new things with the newsletter that we're doing now that we've done. Uh, we've also got a significant increase, like you said, Eric, a 20% increase in the plantings that I can use for a significant change in the program. So there's a group of things. And then I know obviously with the ordinance stuff too, that's another possibility for growth award stuff that we can use. So we've got a variety of different things, but I just wanna, if anybody's got any input or something that they really are passionate about that they want me to include, please let me know. Yeah, Paul, we can um, include a couple of grants. Um, we have gotten uh, some, but then there, I know the Arbor Day Foundation also gives you credits for applying, even if you didn't get the grant. So I can give you the information for the one grant that we applied for that we did not get. And then I can send you information for the two that we did get. Okay. That okay, and good. I think that'll help. Yeah, anything you guys can get me, I'd appreciate. 
pictures, any of the events, things like that. Oh, the newest item then you wanted me to talk about, you said, was the uh, Arbor Day celebration location. I've got a question for you. It's now basically kind of a fork in the road with the results of what COVID had kind of caused, but turned out to be kind of a good thing last year in some ways. Uh, the next school, and it's been on the list for this is the third year now, uh, that we were going to try and do Cranberry Elementary School. Do we want to try and go back to a school? Or do we want to try and do something like we did last year where we have it at a park and invite the Board of Ed to come to the park with us like we did over at Oak Hills, but it doesn't have to necessarily be at Oak Hills. How are the schools operating currently, Paul? I don't, the kids are too old. I don't pay attention. Are they in session with masks? They're, they're in session with masks. Full time, they're back. So I, I say we go for Cranberry. Because you know, you're not going to get them, they don't have the flexibility to, to go elsewhere. Yeah, no. Exactly. We can't bring them to an event, you know. So I say stick with the schools because that's kind of our niche, the elementary schools. But Paul, if you have the opportunity to do something like an Oak Hill, they don't need to be um, mutually exclusive. We can do both. Why not? Yeah, we could. Okay, I just just bringing it up now so that we can start thinking about it because we really start the planning for it in January. So I wanted to get it out there so we kind of got it on the table and think about what we were going to do. So, um, all right. So just want to go back to item nine for a second. Um, in spite of all issues, we did update the tree ordinance, and I think that that in terms of Tree City USA preparation, I think that that's probably something that's worth including. I have to see the base application for renewal. You have to have an ordinance in place, which we've had since 2002. Right. But now, the it, thing that would come into effect would be the growth award. And in some years, I've seen when you've gone into the growth award categories, you know, the, the different events or things that you can do, there are three, four, five points. One of the ones that was five points a year or so ago was the initiation of a new ordinance totally, but you didn't have one before. And then last year I saw where there were significant updates or changes to an ordinance. You didn't get five points for it, but you got three points, okay. things like that. So I'll have to see where it fits to be able to determine what's going to help us the most. Because yeah, every year, and I think I've told this quite a few times already in the past, but uh, for Sonia, basically, you have to have 10 points to get a growth award. Mm. I never yeah. just go for the 10 points because I don't want it. Something didn't come through or they said that that didn't quite qualify. I didn't want us to get disqualified. So I always apply for like 13 to 14 points. That way there, we've got a little bit of a buffer. Okay. Makes so. Sense. So we're, when we're all still a city and it all counts. <laughs> yes, it definitely counts, but I just have to see what the wording is in this particular year's application for growth awards, whether it's new ordinance only or whether it's new ordinance or update of an existing ordinance to determine what we can use and can't use. Okay. But yes, definitely, Peter, we'll definitely look at it. Okay, great. Is uh, I don't I didn't see if Alan had joined us. Bless you, Sonia. Did um yes. did Alan join us today? I no, I don't see him on here. Okay. Did did anyone speak to him and know if he has any um, NTA activities to report on or any news from the the um, his organization? I sent an email out a week or so ago asking for input, and I forwarded it again the other day and did not receive a response. But I know Alan's around and I know they're having, uh, and I can kind of give you a little rundown in his absence. They're gonna have a meeting on Thursday, the monthly meeting, and the election of officers is on Thursday, the election to the board. So that's on Thursday of this week. Okay. Great, does anyone have um, any new or slash other business no public center so just mr mr tree warden how are we doing with the maritime center on the south water street north water street 
Oh, quiet. You're on mute, Chris. Do we know anything? Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so I was away last week. I have not talked to the Maritime Center yet, but I wanted to run something by you guys tonight. Because um, honestly, I, I don't think that they did it maliciously. They weren't a nine Bel Air. Um, they probably pruned the trees to what they thought to give the building a better sight line, um, which is not the way to do. But I was thinking of how can we use this as an educational, it's the Maritime Center. What are we going to do? Find them. Um, so maybe we can work with their director and figure out a way to do some education, whether it's when you're first walking through the door, there's like a little, we, we put some tree panel. I don't know. Just thinking outside the box of what we could do to use that as an educational opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I think that we all recognize we can't necessarily find them. I mean, they're important to the city, but I, I think there is opportunity. But first we need to know why, what happened? <laughs> what are they missing here? So I think after that, we can work with them, Chris, certainly. Yeah, I, I honestly, um, I don't really care about the whys because it's, it's wrong, right? So if something's wrong, I don't care why you did it. There, there are a million reasons why you, like the Avalon top the trees, there's a million reasons and that's not over yet. Like I'm just dealing with their attorneys and like, you're like turtles. No, it, it's about understanding what what's influencing them. Is it the contractors influencing them? Is it because they think right, yeah. it's the thing to do? It's, it's not a matter of right or wrong. It's a matter of what's giving them the impetus for this. Because my current no, fear is that my current fear is that the other property owners are going to see the high profile maritime center with these trees cut back. And they're going to say, we should do this too, because this is the right thing to do. So there is mm -hmm. definitely opportunity to, to maybe, you know, make lemonade out of this. But, yeah. understanding uh, what, you know, who's, who's the influence here? How about uh, um, we ask them instead yeah. of the fine kind of thing, which we all know we can't do, how about we ask them to put some kind of a display prominent right up in the front entrance when you go in of the relationship between maritime life and trees? Well, Paul, we're also, we're also currently have the understanding that they're going to recognize that this is not appropriate. They may really have wanted to do this for visibility reasons, and, and that's why I'm asking why. That's, yeah, that's another whole issue. Yeah, because if that's no, if reason, Peter, you, you you raise a good point, and and I will we'll definitely I'll, I'll give him I mean, a call can, and ask the why for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll work with them. I mean, they they also cut back the the flowering crab apples on the old front pretty heavily, and they look terrible. They should just replace them. But that's an aesthetic call for me. I would call those severely for the crab apples. <laughs> but anyway, take take a look. Um, and uh, so yeah, and, and I, I I don't think that any of us are, are questioning whether or not we should um, we should find them. I don't think no. that's that's the goal of what we are trying to represent. I mean, part of tech is an educational component, and um, and we really want to work with them. Um, I spoke to the um, the chief scientist over there earlier today. And he had mentioned that the uh, director was, um, you know, looking forward to a call and, and having a, you know, a healthy discussion, because I kind of, you know, gave him a little, a little background on why we were, why we were asking. So, um, so I think, I think it'll be a positive exchange. And, um, you know, even if they would let us put a poster, you know, something that's not a permanent um, display when you walk in, you know, to kind of Chris's point, I think that would be really cool and we can put something together um, and have them display it on an, on an easel. When you first walk in, people are waiting online to, uh, to pay and get their tickets and maybe they'll actually read it while they're standing there and waiting. Yeah, or like an Arbor Day kind of uh, on an easel where, you know, the couple weeks before, maybe we get more people to turn out for that or donate to our tree program. Something like that. We, we can use it. We can definitely yeah. use it. Yeah, we can't, I mean, they're, they're, they're important to the city, so we can't really go after them. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring up is with the jump to the, um, with, with our new department that looks for streetscape improvements, we're gonna see more and more trees looking to be put on medians. And so just with, without good, bad, or indifferent, I'd like you at some point to take a look at the Carpinus trees on Cedar Street. Uh, those are trees that are typically used in smaller spaces, uh, but, they're, but they're full branch and they're low growing. And I just went by this morning having this in mind 
and they've been pruned because they get into the sidewalk. They're too low and they're too, the branching is too full. So just take, you know, just as a, as a committee, just take a drive on Cedar Street and just see, you know, how, it, how the effect is, because I think that tree is going to be looked at more and more for use on smaller streetscapes. And there are places that certainly is worth it, but there are places where it may not be appropriate and other selections will have to be considered. So it's just an FYI. So, you know, cause I think this conversation is gonna come up again. Well, I, I would hope that, that, I, that they would ask and seek um, input from the tree advisory committee well, before they, these projects are, are, are thought about. That, that, that was the intent as part of the new ordinance was right. to, to have you guys act as a little bit more of a, 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 a city entity as opposed to an advisory group. No, I mean, on first take, they seem like the right choice, but I went back, I think they've been about seven or eight years now and they, they just, they've gotten too broad for their location. So just just so, so when we have this conversation, there's an illustration in our minds. Right. And I'll also keep in mind that we, we do still plan on having the, the tree summit, like with, with more of the stakeholders as a part of it, as, as opposed to just like the, the inner city group. Um, so, so, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. And I, I'd like for us to, as you guys as a group, and I'd help out any way I could to put something together for that and maybe do a PowerPoint for as what you do is when we get all those stakeholders into the council chambers, um, you know, when COVID lightens up a little bit. Yeah, right. Have you heard anything about a date for that at all, Chris? I haven't heard anything about a specific date, have you? No, I haven't heard a specific date, but I think it's because of the mass and the COVID and, and um, kind of be a little bit irresponsible to, to have that at, at, at this point, right? But I mean, I don't think the council is actually even meeting themselves uh, in person, or I don't know if they are, they're not. I don't think they are. No, they're still, on Zoom. they're still on Zoom. They're still on Zoom. Yeah, Chris, I think that sounds like a great opportunity. And if we have um, more of the stakeholders and, and lay people there, it really makes sense for, um, for us as a committee um, to put together the information about trees. I mean, people are, you know, always quoting how much carbon dioxide trees take up and, and whatnot, but um, it, it would be nice if something like that came from, came from TAC or, you know, was spearheaded at least by, by me as a, as, as, a, as a scientist in that particular field. So that would be really cool. One of the other things too, um... Erica, that I, I was thinking about is maybe like outside of the box, like for instance, you're a homeowner and we have no control over you planting trees on your property, but let's say you do, let's say you plant five trees on your, or 10 trees. Maybe we say, hey, if they, you have little kids, we'll send our bucket truck, like with Christmas lights at Christmas time by and, and do something tree related for that. Like we've been, Delene and I have been talking about figuring out a way to get our, our guys and our trucks involved with Christmas, kind of like the fire department with the, the gifts, but Maybe, hey, if you planted five trees on your, your, even if you're a contractor and you built a house, it's not something you plan on living in, you did it. We'll still do something like that to promote what we're trying to do. Just, I don't know, kind of silly, but it, any, anything to get the word out at this point, I think helps. It's, it's not silly at all. Um, I see people posting on Cranberry all the time that if somebody has a Jeep or if someone has some kind of a truck that if they could bring it by for their kid's birthday party, because they would just love it. And so this kind of fits right into that where we're introducing a whole new generation to, um, to the work that we do. So I think it's actually a pretty, a pretty cool way to get in. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. The only thing that I wanted to mention was that I do have a grant that I'm writing for us that's due this Friday. Um, I was, uh, it's uh, the one where, we're, where we talked about doing the um, pollinator garden at uh, Rudner Court um, for the Children's Learning Center that's due this Friday. Um, and I was able to gather all of the information that I needed. You know, sometimes I send out the SOS, I need, I need help. This time um, I was able to kind of pull everything together. So I'll let you know when that's officially submitted. And um, I think that was it. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to mention? All right, then I move to 
adjourn 650. Well, you money. got lucky. It's a quick meeting this time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to um, say something, Sony? I'm sorry. Oh, no, I made, I just, I said I'll second that motion. Oh, okay, great, great. I'm actually jumping on to a, um, a seven o'clock Zoom on climate change. Um, it is with HHMI, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Uh, if anybody is interested in, um, in jumping on to that, um, I'll email everybody the link when we're done here. Very well. Hey, Erica, yeah, I, I'd like to listen in on that if I could. Yeah, absolutely. I'll send everybody. I thought I could put something in the chat box, but it doesn't look like I can. I don't know how to do yeah, that. Send those spreadsheets over to you, Erica. I had a little chat box problem the other week. I don't even know where the chat box is. Q and A, is that it? Yeah, I'm not. Um, it says no. Oh, I guess because we're not like running the meeting or something, we can't. I'd like there's no chat box, but I'll just go ahead and I'll send the Zoom link to all of us. Um, and then you you know you can join if you want to. I like the the uh, the tree list we came up for the planting trees. It's nice and clean and easy to follow. The uh, the chart. The chart. Yeah, I'm all about charts and graphs. That's no, how my that. mind works. <laughs> we had that a long time ago. It's good. Yeah. Graphic. And, and, uh, and so when you just really quickly, you were the first person, you and your board, who used the um, tree list that Cindy put together with the actual images. Did you find that helpful? Oh, very, very. It, it, as opposed to just a list of just the names, right? Yeah, because we would have had to look them all up. And by the pictures all being there, that was very helpful. Cool, cool. Thanks again, Cindy, for doing that. Yeah, and incidentally, Cindy, if, if you help. Google, if you, you guys Google trees, Mm -hmm. They're not, they don't always give you the correct image. Oh, really? I, you, I, I noticed that. Diligent. I don't use Google. Well, whatever, I, whatever you be very diligent because they don't always give you the correct image. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a related variety. It looks very close, but it's not always correct. Yeah, See, I so looked at like several. So this is even, even more important. So that's a good thing. Exactly, exactly. So awesome. That's from having to Google because we had all the pictures right there. But if you, Peter, if you see anything that needs to be corrected, let me know and I'll go in and fix it. Because there were some trees, all I could show were a leaf. I couldn't even find the whole, the whole tree. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go collect leaves. We need, we need a quiz. I got to get the leaf quiz together. <laughs> awesome, guys. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Right. Erica, good night. Good night. Good night. Good Back to Send work. Send me a picture of your cute self, Sonia. <laughs> I, sent, I sent you one. <laughs> oh, awesome. Good, good, good. All Thank right. you so much. All right. Have a good night. You too.